Hello and welcome again to Kenmen 3. Let's move in and take a look at today's stoichiometry problem. And here's our question. 5 grams of calcium carbonate when heated produced 2.40 grams of calcium oxide. A typical decomposition reaction. What is the percentage of calcium oxide produced and what is the expected yield of carbon dioxide in dm cube at standard temperature and pressure? The first thing you must do is to write the balanced equation. And here you can see that the balanced equation shows that one mole of calcium carbonate generates one mole of calcium oxide and one mole of carbon dioxide. Using this information and using these relationships for converting moles to mass and mass to moles, we can determine number of moles of calcium carbonate consumed and the number of moles of calcium oxide produced. Using these masses and the relative formula masses for each compound, we can determine the number of moles. Using these values from the periodic table, we determine that the relative formula mass of calcium carbonate is 100 grams per mole, and the relative formula mass for calcium oxide, 56 grams per mole. Next, we calculate the number of moles of calcium carbonate consumed in the reaction, and this comes to 0 0.05 moles of calcium carbonate. Note how the units cancel here. Doing the same for calcium oxide, we get 0 0.0429 moles. Now the balanced equation suggests that one mole of calcium carbonate should generate one mole of calcium oxide. At least this is the theoretical expectation, the expected yield. But the experimental value does not always agree with the expected value. And here, dividing this experimental value by 0 0.500, which is what's expected given the 1 to 1 ratio of calcium carbonate to calcium oxide, 1 mole to 1 mole, which you get from the balanced equation. Given that, we can then use this relationship to solve and to get the percentage yield, which is 85.8%. To get the amount of carbon dioxide at standard temperature and pressure, SATP, we can use this relationship. PV is equal to NRT, the ideal gas equation. And rearranging these values from the ideal gas equation, we can solve for V. In solving for V, we would have to place the expected number of moles of carbon dioxide, which is going to be 0 0.05 in keeping with the balanced equation, and the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1, times 8.31 joules per Kelvin mole, which is the gas constant, times 298, which is standard temperature, divided by 101.3 kilopascals, standard pressure. Now, when you use this relationship, one of the things that might confuse students is how do the units cancel? And here we can take a look at how these units actually cancel. Placing moles here and noting that the gas constant has these units, 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. So this can be written like this, standard temperature, 298 Kelvin. And then all of this must be divided by standard pressure, which is the same as multiplying by 1 divided by 101.3 kilopascals. Then you see moles cancelling with moles, Kelvin cancelling with Kelvin, and joules cancelling to some extent with kilopascals because one joule is equivalent to a kilopascal dm cube. Kilopascal unit multiplied by dm cube. So all of these kilopascals will cancel and it will leave you only with the unit dm cube. Solving all of this, you get 1.2 dm cube as the expected volume of carbon dioxide. A much shorter way of arriving at this answer could come if you are given this value for one mole of a gas at SATP, standard ambient temperature and pressure, or room temperature and pressure. This is usually given, if you're given this, then you simply need this relationship to solve. If one mole occupies 24.0, then 0.05 moles will occupy this many. And the answer is the same as solving with the longer method.